Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, 2016 has been really quite an interesting year. Maybe there are some things you want to forget in 2016. I hope there are some things that you also want to remember. Now, in the area of mobile processors, there's been quite a lot of activity. And this year we see processors from Qualcomm and from Samsung and from MediaTek and from Huawei that are all vying for position as the best processor of 2016. So which is the best processor? Well, we're gonna put them through the test. We're gonna look at some benchmarks and see which one comes out top. So if you're ready, let's go. So if you remember, at the end of last year, the leading processors were the Snapdragon 810 and the Exynos 7420. And they were both octa-core processors using four Cortex-A57 cores from ARM and four Cortex-A53 cores from ARM. And they were using heterogeneous multiprocessing, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Now, fast forward a year and things are quite different. Now we have quad-core processors, we have octa-core processors, we even have a deca-core, 10-core processor that are vying for the position as the best uh, SOC of 2016. So this year we're going to look at four different processors. The first is going to be the Snapdragon 821, the Snapdragon 821, and along the way we're also going to look at the Snapdragon 820 because these really are kind of twin processors. The 821 is about 10% better than the 820, but essentially the same processor. We're also going to be looking at the Exynos 8890, which is a processor from Samsung. We're going to be looking at the MediaTek X25, which is the DecaCore processor from MediaTek. And we're going to be looking at the Kirin 960, which is the leading processor from Huawei. So let's start by looking at the Snapdragon 820 and the 821. Now last year Qualcomm were using cores that they licensed directly from ARM, the Cortex-A57 and the Cortex-A53. However, this year they're using their own in-house core design. And they can do that because they have an architectural license from ARM, which allows them to design their own cores as long as they are instruction set and architecture compatible with ARM specifications. And the core, core that Qualcomm have designed is the Cryo. Now the Snapdragon 820 and 821 have four Cryo cores. Now two of those cores are high performance cores that are clocked up to two 2.4 gigahertz and then there are two more power efficient cryo cores that are clocked at 1.6 gigahertz max in the 820 or 2 gigahertz max in the 821 and those are used for the less computing intensive tasks let's say like streaming video and of course the other big thing about the, the snapdragon 820 and 821 is the adreno 530 gpu which again is a custom gpu designed specifically by qualcomm themselves now the next processor in our lineup is the Samsung Exynos 8890 and it's a really interesting processor. Now it's an octa-core design like the 7420 before it and four of the cores in there are Cortex-A53 cores just like the Cortex-7420 from last year. And the Cortex-53 base A53 is the uh, energy efficient core from ARM that is used for those low uh, CPU intensive tasks like streaming video or checking your email or things like that. But at the top end, rather than using a core from ARM, Samsung designed their own core, a core called the M1. And Samsung also have an architectural license with, with ARM, which means they're allowed to design their own cores that have to be fully ARM compatible. Now the M1 took three years to design, and it's the first time that Samsung are designing an ARM compatible core for their CPU. So you've got four cores designed by uh, ARM, four cores designed by Samsung to give you that octa-core setup. Now, along with those uh, eight cores, you've also got the Mali T880 GPU. This is the MP12 version, which has got 12 rendering cores inside of it. Now, the next processor in our lineup is a really interesting one. It's from MediaTek, and it's called the X25. It's not a quad-core processor. It's not an octa-core processor. It's a deca-core processor. It's got 10 cores inside of it. This is actually quite amazing. Now, what MediaTek have done is they've taken the Cortex-A72 core from ARM and they've put two of those in the X25 and they are there for the heavy lifting and it's clocked at 2.5 gigahertz. Now there are 10 cores, so that's two of them. Now the other eight cores are in fact Cortex A53 cores, the same as what you find in the, uh, the Samsung, the same as what you find in some of the chips from last year. And the A53 is great at energy efficiency, but it's not necessarily that fast. So what they've done is they've added in the A72, and then they've got eight cores that are Cortex A53. And these Cortex A53 cores are divided themselves into two clusters. Now on the GPU side, it's also using the Mali T880, just like the 
Exynos 8890, but the difference is here it's only got four rendering cores. The, uh, the Exynos has 12 of them, this has four. However, they are clocked at a higher clock rate, so hopefully that clock rate will boost the performance, and we'll see when we get to the benchmarks in a moment. Now, the last processor we're going to be looking at today is a new one from uh, Huawei. It's actually called the High Silicon Kirin 960. High Silicon is a wholly owned subsidiary of Huawei, and it's really bleeding edge. This, process, this uh, pro processor has four Cortex-A73 cores, not A72 like the X25 or like the Kirin 950 before it, but A73 cores, which is really the latest core from ARM. Then there are four Cortex-A53 cores for the power efficiency. And then on top of that, there is the Mali G71 GPU, the newest GPU available from ARM. It's a whole new architecture, in fact, that ARM have designed for their next generations of GPU. So this processor is really bleeding edge Cortex-A73 and the Mali G71 GPU. And it could be really interesting to see how this processor competes with the others. Now, I've used this term heterogeneous multiprocessing a few times. Just a quick summary, what it means is not all the cores are equal. So there are some cores that are high performance and there are some cores that are high energy efficiency. And the high performance ones use more power when they're running. However, hopefully they can complete tasks quicker and they can give you that big performance. And then the more power efficient ones are not don't have the same performance, they run slower. However, they don't use as much power and therefore the CPU switches between these cores depending on the workload, trying to give you that balance between highest performance and highest power efficiency. Okay, so let's look at the testing. Now to do the testing, I've got three different types of benchmark. Now the first types of benchmark are basically your standard apps you download from the Play Store and Tutu, Geekbench, Basemark and so on. And we're gonna be looking at the performance of each of these processors using those benchmarks. Then the second and third group are benchmarks that I have written myself. Now obviously I can't test the SOC without it being inside of a smartphone. So I've got hold of a bunch of phones to do this testing and these are the phones I'm gonna be using. For the Snapdragon 821, I'm going to be using the uh, Google Pixel. For the Exynos 8890, I'm going to be using the Galaxy S7, obviously the Exynos variant of that. For the MediaTek X25, I'm going to be using the Meizu Pro Air 6, and for the high silicon Kirin 960, I'm going to be using the Huawei Mate 9. Now along the way, I've also tested the uh, Snapdragon 820 to see how it compares to the 821, and I'm gonna be using the Galaxy S7 Qualcomm variant for that. Also for, I'm also gonna do tests against the Snapdragon 810, which is one of last year's leading processors. And to do that, I'm gonna be using the Nexus 6P. And finally, I'm also going to be using uh, the uh, Note 5, the Galaxy Note 5, to compare with the uh, Exynos 7420, also from last year. So hopefully we'll get a good overview of how last year's processors compare to this year's, as well as how this year's processors compare against each other. So let's start with Antutu. Now, as you can see here, the winner of the Antutu uh, benchmarking is the Snapdragon 821 as found inside of the Google Pixel. Second place comes the Exynos 8890 in the Samsung S7, and in third place comes the Kirin 960. Now, there's a few things here to note. First of all, see the difference in the Antutu scores between this year's processors and last year's processors, we can actually see that there's been a significant increase. Even from the Snapdragon 810 up to the Kirin 960, we see at least a 30% increase in the performance. Now the next test we're gonna be using is Geekbench 4. Now Geekbench 4 gives us two different types of results. The first is the single core result, which tells you how fast one core is on that processor, regardless of how many cores there are in total. And the other is the multi-core result, which tells you what happens if it uses all the cores at the same time to give you the performance of the processor when all of its cores are being used. So looking at the Geekbench 4 single core results, we can see clearly that the winner is the Kirin 960, and that's using the Cortex-A73. In second place, you get the Exynos 8890 with its M1 processor from Samsung. And in third place, you get the Helio X25, which has, of course, got the Cortex-A72. So the A73 is the fastest, the M1 comes next, and then the A72 uh, after that. So moving on to the Geekbench 4 multi-score tests, we see that the Kirin 960 is the fastest with a score of 6,298. Followed by that is the Exynos 8890. In third place comes the MediaTek Helio X25. 
It's an interesting result from the MediaTek uh, X25 because it has 10 cores. Now, it just shows that those 10 cores couldn't do the same thing as the eight cores in the 8890 or inside the 960. And the reason for that, of course, is that eight of those cores are Cortex-A53 cores, which are very good at power efficiency, but they're not the highest performance. And in fact, the X25 is relying on the performance of the two A72 cores to boost up its overall performance. Now, the next set of benchmarks, I'm going to be using Basemark and Velamo. Now, both of these are popular benchmarks. They test more the CPU than the GPU, although the Basemark does also do some GPU testing. And what's interesting about the Velamo test is that it has inside of it uh, one of the tests it uses is called the dry stone test. Now the dry stone test is quite a classic po uh, benchmark test and it only tests integer performance of the CPU, so no floating point. So when it comes to base mark, here again we see that the Kirin 960 is the winner, then in second place is the Exynos 8890, and then in third comes the Snapdragon 821. When you then switch over to Velimo, now this time the Exynos 8890 comes in first place. It's the first time the uh, Exynos has come in first place so far, so well done to Samsung for that. And then next we have the 820. Notice it has a better score than the 821. And then finally you have the Kirin 960. And then looking at the dry stone scores, we can see that the Exynos 8890 is the fastest at integer uh, computing, in fact, by quite a long way. Then next of all, you have the uh, Helio X25 with its Cortex A72 cores in it. And then in third place, we have the Snapdragon 820, again, having a better score than the Snapdragon 821. So now on to my own custom benchmark. Now the first one is basically just does some math, it does some SHA1 hashes, it does some prime number stuff, it does some sorting of a big table, and the whole test runs and it gives you how long it took to run. So the shorter, the lower the value, the better the score is. And the second test is a 2D physics simulation, which puts in two drops of water into a simulation every sec every frame and there are 60 frames a second that then runs for 90 seconds and the top score should be 10,800 and as we can see the Kirin 960 comes in first with the shortest test run then in second place we have the Snapdragon 821 and then a good performance in third place by the Helio X25 which just managed to beat the Exynos 8890. And over to the 2D water physics simulation, we can see here that the Kirin scored a maximum score of 10,800 drops of water during the 90 second test run. That's the maximum that any uh, device can get, so Kirin maxed out this test completely. In second place, interestingly, we find the Exynos 7420, so that's the process in the Note 5 from last year, that actually comes in second place. And then in third place, we get the Exynos 8890, the phone, that, the processor that's in the uh, S7 this year. And because the Kirin 960 has maxed out this test, for 2017, I'm gonna have to write a new one because this one's uh, no good anymore. Now, I've also got one more uh, benchmark that I wrote. This one I wrote in Unity 3D. It's basically a terrain flyover. A camera flies over a complicated terrain of rocks and, and trees and water and so on. And we can see here that the GPU king is the Snapdragon 821 with 37.3 frames per second. In fact, in second place would also be the Snapdragon 820 because it has the same GPU. But if we group those two together, the Adreno 530 comes in first place. In second place comes in the Kirin 960 with the Arm Mali G71 GPU. And then in third place is the Exynos 8890 with the Mali T880 MP12 GPU. Now my third set of tests are the C tests that I use from my Java and C uh, comparison that I did earlier this year. Again, there are three tests doing things like uh, SHA1 hashes, like doing prime numbers and doing some maths functions, and it's just measure how long it takes. So the lower the time, the faster the performance. And as we can see here, the Snapdragon 820 and 821 have almost identical scores across these three tests. So we declare the 820 and 821 as the joint winner for these particular tests. Then we can see that overall, the Kirin 960 comes in second place and the Exynos 8890 comes in third. Since you've all been paying attention so well and you've got this far in the video, I wanna just throw you something, a surprise here. Let's compare how some of these processors compare to the Apple A10 Fusion. So first of all, looking at the Basemark OS2 benchmark, we see that the A10 Fusion beats 
the uh, Kirin and the 8890 and the Snapdragon 821 and comes in first. In second place, we get the Kirin 960, which is no surprise because that's how it scored in the Basemark tests earlier on. And then in third place, the Exynos 8890. And then when we get down to the Geekbench single core test, again, we find the A10 is the winner. It's got the fastest single core. Uh, however, in second place, again, we get the Kirin 960, and then in third place, the Exynos 8890. And if you think it's all doom and gloom for the uh, Android uh, SoCs, it's not, because once we get into the multi-core test, when all the cores are being used to give you the overall performance of the processor, we find that the Kirin 960 is the clear winner, beating the Exynos 8890 and beating the Apple A10 Fusion. In fact, the Exynos 8890 also beats the A10 Fusion, so it's Kirin first, Exynos second, and then Apple A10 Fusion third. And lastly, I use my 2D water physics simulation again on the iPhone. So we've got a result across all the different processes here. And we can see again, the Kirin maxed out that uh, test at 10,800, something the, a the iPhone was not able to do. So now that we've done all the scores, which one's the winner? Well, one thing we know for sure is that the GPU in the uh, Snapdragon 820, 821 is excellent, the Adreno 530, and that does boost the overall scores of this processor in tests like Antutu and other tests that have a GPU, a heavy GPU component. However, when you're just looking at the CPU performance, we find that the Kirin 960 and the Exynos 8890 perform better. Now, if you tally up all the scores, GPU and CPU and everything, the Kirin 960 won the most tests out of all of them, and it came second and third consistently across the others. In second place really is the Exynos 8890, or because although it didn't win many tests, it always was there in second or third place, so a strong performer across all the different types of tests. Now the thing about the Kirin 960 and about the Samsung is the number of handsets we can find these processes is actually quite limited. They're going to be in some Samsung devices. I know that Samsung have managed to do some contract with a couple of other handset manufacturers. Huawei, you're basically only going to find them in Huawei handsets. So if you're looking for a processor that's going to be in a phone from another OEM, say HTC or Samsung or LG, then really you're going to have to go with the Qualcomm. And the Qualcomm has also proved to be a great processor, both the 820 and the 821. So my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority and I hope you've enjoyed my overview video of the processors of 2016. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel and also you should download the Android Authority app because that will give you access to all of our news and features directly on your mobile phone. But last and not least, don't forget to go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.